Ready? Ready? I can do it. Good afternoon. I'm Mark Winnie, from Channel 2 Action News, and I'm humbled. I'm always humbled to be in front of an august assemblage like this, uh, but I'm especially humbled uh, to be here to introduce Chief Justice Harold Melton. So about one o'clock this morning, I got home from uh, shooting an exclusive video of a big arrest. Got up about three and a half later, three and a half hours later, headed out with a, the GPS set ETA of 1141. That was before an hour and a half stoppage on I-20 for a burning tractor trailer. Uh, but it is the kind of thing that I would go to for Chief Justice Melton. Um, and I'll tell you why, seriously. Uh, of all the dedicated public servants that I have met in 41 years as a newspaper and television reporter, there are very few men and women uh, who compare to his suite of gifts. And you know, if you can use the particular suite of gifts that the man upstairs has given you to serve others, and you can make your living doing that, to me, that's the definition of calling. And Chief Justice Melton, who has spent his entire career in public service, fits that definition. And while I'm on a theological plane, I will tell you that I firmly believe that God put Harold Melton and his job in 2020 and 2021 to use his intellect, his judgment, his compassion, his humility, his temperament to shepherd our state's criminal justice system through a crisis the likes of which it has never known. And I mention humility. He doesn't conduct himself with the air of superiority that one might associate with someone who holds such a lofty office. He already knows that he's superior because he went to Auburn University. <laughs> Where, by the way, the student union several months ago was just named for him. So I really am humbled and considered a real blessing to give to you Chief Justice Harold Moulton. Thank you. Thank y'all. Mark, thank you for making the trip. Uh, thank you for being a friend to our judiciary. You've become a, a significant and consistent force in these meetings, and we, we value what you do to help us tell the story. Um, so just thank you for everything. Uh, thank you, friends. It's, it's an honor and a privilege to be amongst friends. And I, I use that word in the greatest sense. Uh, I, I, of course, want to start with my friends on the Supreme Court, uh, presiding justice, soon to be presiding justice, Michael Boggs. He started looking funny, but get used to it. They'll be using that soon. Uh, I think that's all from our court. We do have Chief Judge McFadden on the Court of Appeals, Judge Brown, Judge Dillard, and I saw Judge, Ver, uh, Judge Colvin and, and Gobeil. And that's everybody from the Court of Appeals. Where's Trey? Oh, there you are. Hey. Right. <laughs> and then there's Trey Pipkin. <laughs> um, and then all the other judges that are here, there's one judge I do need to single out, and, and that is Judge Art Smith. Um, judge LaGrua, well, Justice LaGrua. Oh, yes, yeah, she's here too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Justice LaGrua uh, has chaired our COVID task force, 
and she will tell you the, the, the numerous, numerous conversations that we would have almost nightly, especially on the front end. Uh, but then we brought in Judge Art Smith, and he played the role that we really kind of kept quiet for, for good reason. And he ran interference uh, with judges all across the state. Uh, and just, just kind of, we, we got calls about judges supposedly acting badly, and most of the times they were not. But he played that role of just kind of checking behind the scenes and seeing what needed to be done. And he did it very diplomatically, very gracefully, and it was invaluable. So, Judge Smith, thank you so much for your support. I want to talk about service and, 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 and share what it looks like to me. And, and I'll do so by reflecting on a couple of experiences that I've had, some related to the court, some outside the court. Uh, but before I, before I joined the court, most of my work outside of work was chasing around kids, chasing kids. I did ministry with Young Life Ministries, um, teenagers. And we did contact work, what we call contact work, as it means just being in, involved in their lives. And one of the ways we did contact work was through sports. And so I was coaching a basketball team. And, you know, I had graduated from law school. I, I, I'd gone out and bought this really fancy, sharp chick magnet of a car, a 1991 Nissan Sentra. <laughs> and uh, I was picking up kids. Uh, to, to take to practice or a game. I don't remember what. And so I, I had about four or five kids in the car. And then I pulled up to the church where the van was, parked the car, get into the van. Y'all get into the van. We're running late. Let's go. Let's go. I back up and I hit my car. I backed up in the van and hit my own car. And the kids in the car in the van said things like, hey, Harold, you, you hit your, your car. I, I know I hit my car. Why'd you hit your car? No, no good reason. No good reason. Well, didn't you know it was there? Yes, I knew it was there. And so on and on and on. And so then, so I'm at the church, and it's not my church, but it's a church where the van was parked. And there were people just standing around waiting for whatever was next. And all they saw and heard was a crash. They look up and see this van hitting the car. They didn't see anything that wound up to that, led up to that. So as I'm pulling out, I have to drive by these people, and I notice that they're looking at me strange. I, of course, have to roll down the window and explain to them, this is not a hit and run. <laughs> this is one of those few instances in life where a person has parked their car in the parking lot, got into another vehicle in that same parking lot, and hit their own car. Everything's just fine. That's what service means to me. <laughs> Service is often presented on, on TV as, uh, you know, United Way commercials, the music's playing, kids are smiling, everybody's saying thanks. And, but more often than not, it, it looks like that. When, when I came onto the court in 2005, um, it was an it was a unorthodox appointment. I was younger. I was not known amongst the bar. It was one of those things that people looked at the governor and said, does he really know what he was, is, what was doing? And so I remember Kim and I, my wife Kim, we came down to one of these uh, fancy uh, retreats with the executive committee. I think it was at Sea Island. And it's one of my first interactions with bar leadership. And I, I got to be on my best behavior. And we get there and we have our first meeting and I'm getting dressed and I'm, I'm looking as good as I can and I don't have a tie. I don't have a tie. I cannot have this first impression and go into this meeting with bar leadership with no tie. So I go down to the gift shop at Sea Island <laughs> to buy a tie. And I see wheelbarrows and rabbits and all kinds of things, but all the price tags were like a hundred dollars, 120. And this is the tie. I love the tie. <laughs> it's the most expensive tie I own. <laughs> it's $90 for this. <laughs> it's exactly right. Mark, did your tie cost $90? Uh, no, it's <laughs> 
And so um, the, the ways we have to, the steps that we have to go through to just even engage in, before we even get to all the issues that you're trying to wrestle with. So that's what service looks to me. And then I remember one time, you know, J Judge Letitia Deer Jackson just recently sat in on the case for us. We used to have this happen a lot. And uh, I think Justice Boggs, you were on the court then because I think you were the one, main one laughing at me. But we had a visiting judge and we went through, we'd go through all this ceremony and take photos and, and that kind of thing. And, and I think I was presiding judge at the time. Justice Hines was chief. And so they put the chief and the residing judge in the, in the chair and the visiting judge in the middle. And we're all sitting there. And I don't know who looked down first. And we were really, really pros for our photos. And somebody says, presiding justice, your shoes don't match. <laughs> and they didn't. I had, a, I had a brown shoe and a non-brown shoe. I don't know. <laughs> um, and that's... It, I still, I, I still don't hear the end of that, but that's, that's, you know, so the point is that when you're doing service, more often than not, we're just stumbling and bumbling through. And at some point, if, if you're lucky, you know, things line up and you, you have some success, but really doing service is paying attention to the small things. It, it really is paying attention to the small things. I've had the benefit of learning from several chiefs, and growing and being exposed and looked out after by all the chiefs along the way. Uh, the first chief that was that was serving when I came onto the court was Justice Sears. And you may recall that Governor Purdue, who appointed me, who I served as executive counsel, uh, quietly and not so quietly recruited somebody to run against Justice Sears. And so I, I came on the court. I was wondering how she was going to take to this, this young buck. Uh, but if you, if you hear Justice Sears talk, and she and I have uh, talked several times, you, and every time I'm, I become more and more convinced of her commitment to make sure that I got off to a good start. And she did that. She looked out after me, and there were some shots that were fired, and she stood and, and protected me. So she's my first chief. Um, after that, there is Justice Hunstein. Now, you may get the impression that Justice Hunstein is a strong-minded, firebrand, forceful, dynamic judge, woman. You might get that impression. You'd be right. <laughs> she was every bit of that. Uh, and Justice Sears and Justice Hunstein, they, they, they kind of managed things. They kind of kept things um, moving, we kind of got in, input and information as things happened, but they pretty much, they ran the show. Uh, following that, there was Justice Carley. Now, when I got on the bench, I had committed to the JNC and to the governor that no judge on our court was going to outwork me. And then I ran into Justice Carley. <laughs> and Justice Carley would say things like, you ask him, how was your weekend? He'd say, it was a great weekend. I got to work both days over the weekend. That was his idea of a great weekend. I said, well, Justice Carl, you're going to have that one. I, I can't compete with that. Uh, but that he took that fervor and that tenacity and that commitment to excellence uh, to the next level. And that's what he was always about. If you worked hard and you want to learn and grow, then you're going to be his best friend. Justice Thompson came on board and uh, he's the first one that began to say, OK, well, you're going to be chief one day. So you need to do this and you need to do that. And frankly, I think it was very convenient for him to prepare me for, uh, for chief. But he really made sure that I was equipped and had exposure. And then, of course, you know, uh, Justice Hines, uh, a man who was a mentor to me going back to my days um, while I was still at Auburn, a man who I ate lunch with for almost 30 years um, going back to, to law school. Uh, and he absolutely prepared us. But between Justice Thompson and Justice Hines, what we developed was a, a collaborative uh, approach where we all came into a room and we talked about something with everybody, something with somebody, not everybody, but somebody. You never did anything by yourself. You always heard from somebody else. With Hines, you would pre-meet, then you would meet, then post-meet. Uh, but the idea was, let's hear from everybody. And let's get input from specialists and people who really had insight. 
And that's been the strength of our court. Um, so I say all that to say this, if we've had any success in this whole process, the lessons that I've learned are these, and they're not, they're not deep. They're not deep at all, but they're, they're real. And the first is pay attention to the small things, pay attention to the small things. It means returning phone calls. It means if you said you're going to do something, try and make sure that you actually follow up and deliver. And that's not deep, but it can be rare sometimes. Um, that has been really, really important. And then the other part is while you take, pay attention to the small things, to pay attention to the large things. And the large things are the people in, in this room, the people that you've been blessed to be surrounded by. Um, when we do that, several things happen, but really two that, that really matter. And that is, I found that I'm going to be much more effective in my service, much more um, able to move the ball from A to B. Actually, B is not very far. Let's say A to Z. But actually able to get done what needs to get done. That's, and then more importantly for me personally, it, it, it makes me a better person. Um, so you in this room, the, the, the ability to laugh and to joke, yeah, it's fun, but uh, I'm joining the heck out of y'all. I always have, but y'all have made me a better person, and I'm so grateful. So thank you for everything. Love y'all. God bless the state of Georgia. Thank you, Chief Justice. So every year we honor someone um, in the judicial section with the Spirit of Justice Award. And this is a jurist who embodies excellence in the legal profession and has made significant contributions to the judiciary, either as a lawyer or as a judge. This year, the best way to describe our honoree is to use some commercial jingles. Like Airbnb, they belong everywhere. Like Allstate, you're in good hands. Like Apple, they force you to think different. Like BMW, they are the ultimate driving machine. Like Bounty, they're the quicker picker-upper. <laughs> like Campbell's Soup, they're mm-mm good. <laughs> like Coca-Cola, when you're around them, they open happiness. Like the Energizer Bunny, they keep going and going and going. Like Frosted Flakes, they're great. Like General Electric, they bring the good things to life. Like Halfords, they go the extra mile. Like Home Depot, they're how doers get it done. Like Land Rover, they go beyond. Like Lexus, they are the relentless pursuit of perfection. Like Ford, they are built to last. Like Nationwide, they're always on your side. Like Nike, they just do it. Like Sky Q, they believe in better. Like State Farm, they're like a good neighbor, they're always there. Like Walmart, anytime, anywhere. Like E.F. Hutton, when they speak, you listen. Like Strobes and more, they are the quality you can trust. Like Adidas, they are impossible, it's nothing. Like Steel, they are cut above the rest. This year, we chose a phoenix to honor our honoree. The phoenix spirit is an animal, represents magical and gentle soul. They bring good luck, harmony, peace, balance, and prosperity. They are a magical creature that symbolizes fire and passion. They rise from the flames. They are a true inspiration in many cultures around the world, ancient and present day. They are also a firebird symbol. It is one of those that symbols a rebirth. This year's honoree is like Chevrolet. They're not the heartbeat of America, but they are the heartbeat of Georgia. Not only because this jurist is extraordinary and has had unparalleled leadership during these unprecedented times of our judicial emergency, but because he has led with grace, even temperament, and a constant beam of hope, inspiration, and guidance for the court in this great state. In addition to that, he is an influence of the courts. 
And it didn't start when he became chief justice, nor did it become start when he was a Supreme Court justice. It started when he was executive counsel for then Governor Sonny Perdue. I intentionally used they. I intentionally did not look to my left because if you know Chief Justice Meltem, he is very humble and unassuming, and he probably would have got up and said, that's enough, Tish. <laughs> but what I will say is, if you know about social media and those memes that say, if this was a person, if service and leadership was a person, it would be Chief Justice Harold Melton. That's the reason we honor you with our spirit of justice. And it reads, in appreciation for the exemplary leadership in unprecedented times, Chief Justice Harold Nelson. Stay thirsty, my friends. If y'all could bear with us just one more sec. Um, I want to thank Mark Winnie um, for yet again moderating. I don't think the introduction could have been any better. Um, and it's a tribute to the chief. Thank you for doing everything you could to get here today. I know how stressful it was. We've been on the phone since early morning. Um, <laughs> um, but we also have one more recognition besides the chief, and that's our leader for the last couple of years, Judge Letitia Deer Jackson. And this says, in appreciation for your graceful leadership of the judicial section of the state bar. So let's give Tish a warm round and the chief. And we'll be back to a, a, a program next year as well. So y'all please keep coming. Some of us have war stories, a CLE, so we're transitioning. Some of us have other obligations, but thank you again for joining us and have a great one and stay safe. <laughs>